I've been a university and water agency horticulturist for 25 years. I've worked on three continents during droughts. I've written two books on water use efficiency. And I've failed. So I need your help. Do you know, raise your hand, do you know how much water you should use in a day? No hands. Anybody? Anybody? All right, let me try this. How much water do you use in a day? No hands. You're not alone. When people are surveyed in the United States, they underestimate how much water they use by 4 to 5x. In other words, they think they use a very little amount of water when in reality they use a lot of water. Public water agencies then, 56,000 of them in the United States, serving 85% of the population, not only have I failed, they failed. And that failure is so fundamental because water is the most vital resource that we have. So, I'm going to tell you today why we failed, but more importantly, I want to demonstrate for you how we can fix the economics of water and save much more water than we are today. But let's start with water itself. 75% of our planet is water. All the water that we have today is all the water that was here at the Earth's beginning. Only 1% of it, though, is available to us to use. 66% of our body is water. 70% of the body of an elephant is water. When we send rocket ships out of the space, we're looking first and foremost for water because our understanding of water is that it's the source of life. Even camels know the value of water, right? But water is much more than that. There are uses of that 1% that we hardly even imagine. For example, one computer chip takes 10 gallons of water to make. It takes 100 gallons to make a personal computer. It takes 1,800 gallons to make these jeans. It takes 40,000 gallons of water to make a car. That's twice as much water as sits in the average swimming pool in Riverside. The rest of that water, 80% of our water, produces energy and grows food. But water is much, much more than that. I'm a water geek. I couldn't believe how right Charles Fishman was with this comment. He's not from water. He wrote about water in The Big Thirst. Water is the most vital resource in every aspect of our human endeavor. But the economics of water are a mashup of tradition, wishful thinking, and poor planning. Let me break that down for you. Tradition. The water industry is 100 plus years old. And as an institution, it does the same thing over and over and over again. Wishful thinking. In Florida, they want hurricanes. It recharges the groundwater aquifers. It's their water source. That's like in California, hoping that there's an earthquake each morning to wake us up. And poor planning. The last 150 years out of the last 1,000 have been wet years. So all of our perceptions of water, our water infrastructure, our relationship to water have been built around what's probably an anomaly. We could have 500 years of dryness, like from 900 to 1400 AD. We don't know. Poor planning. Praying for rain is actually being done at water agencies today. That's not such a good endeavor to have. So let's fix the economics of water. And I'm going to use one story of a phone call to a water agency that happens at every water agency sometime during the week. And that phone call is, I'll, I'll use Mr. and Mrs. Smith as the example. That phone call came into the water agency and nobody could figure out quite what to do with this, so they forward the phone call to me, lucky me. And I listened to Mr. and Mrs. Smith and it basically goes like this. We couldn't possibly use the amount of water you tell us we are on our water bill. We would be drowning. 
And you people, the public water agency, are ripping us off and everybody in the neighborhood thinks the same way. And then Mrs. Smith chimes in with, and water's free, why do I have to pay for it anyway? And I thought, wow, this is a great opportunity. So I proceeded to tell them about what a water agency really does. And I said, I agree with you, water's free. But what the water agency does is we take that water through a plumbing system where the water falls free out of the sky, and we put it into a treatment plant and clean it up so it's safe for you to drink. And we take that water from the treatment plant and we put it in those reservoirs in your community. And then with gravity and pumps, we move that water through an underground piping system right to your front door. And then I stopped and I said, Mr. Smith, do you have a cell phone? And he said, hey, you smart aleck whippersnapper, of course I have a cell phone. I said, do you ever have a drop call? And he said, all the time. I said, well, then I guess we've done a pretty good job at the water district because have you ever turned on the tap and never had water come out? Silence. So I continued. I was getting lucky. I said, and we deliver that water 24-7, 365 days a year for about $2 a day. And you're almost right. The water is almost free. That water that we bring to your front door to use whenever you want costs three-tenths of a penny per gallon or a thousand times less than this bottle of water that you would buy at the store. So I said to Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you are under no obligation to take the water from us. You can stop paying, we'll turn the water off, and you can dig a well, you can go drive and get water. You do whatever you want. You're not obligated to take our water. I said, but if you don't think that that's an engineering marvel and a sweet, sweet deal, you should talk to the people who have to walk to fetch water. And that jar on, front of the, on top of their head carries about seven gallons and weighs about 45 pounds. And the average walk is about 3.7 miles, morning and night. So let me show you what the water agency does and what it costs. And I'm going to use these beads as an example. The red beads are the fixed cost, that water system, that underground pipes all the maintenance, all the operation, most of the cost of a water agency are those red beads tied up in that water system. I'm going to put them right here. The water is cheap. When you add those two things together, that comes to the 100% cost that an agency needs to recover to serve us, to bring that water to our front door. So that's the real story of the costs of water. Unfortunately, on our water bills, we see something like this. The fixed costs are reduced because politicians don't want to have big fixed costs on their water bill. And they take those fixed costs and they embed it in the cost of water so that they can tell us that water is very expensive and we should use less. The only problem with that is that a drought comes along, they ask us to save water, Conservation people come along, please save water. And so I'm going to save water. So there's water that's now saved. And it's gone. And along with it, some of the costs embedded in that water, which are fixed, which the agency needs to run and operate that marvelous system. And it's gone. So now, the agency has to ask you and I to pay more because we saved water. And it doesn't make sense to Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Let's see if we can fix the economics of water and water conservation. And we're going to call it a sustainable water rate structure. It's got to do two things. It's got to sustain the economics of the water agency to be able to deliver that water to us. And it's got to sustain, sustain the environment. We've got to use water efficiently because we don't have enough 
to go around. So here's how that's done. Here's the real cost of water. Water is cheap. The fixed costs are high. And it looks like this. That's step one, fixing the economics and putting the reality on the water bill. Step two is setting an allocation so that you and I know how much water is an efficient amount of water to use. Not one hand came up. Again, you're not alone. 70% of the people in this country have no idea what the water agency does. But we have the ability, we have the research and the technology to create a water budget allocation for every single home, business, park, school, farm. So here's the inside, an efficient use of water on the inside. We've colored it blue. Here's an efficient amount of water to use outside that we can calculate. That makes up a water budget allocation. And if a home or a business or a park or a school starts going above that amount of water, then that water becomes very, very expensive, as it should, because we don't have enough to go around. This is not just an idea. This is not just a theory. There's a dozen agencies in California that have a sustainable water rate structure, and the best one is right here in Riverside, Western Municipal Water District. And they've created a very sophisticated rate structure where they've actually individualized this water budget for every single customer, every single home, every single business, every single orange grove. And agencies that have this rate structure see a water reduction of 20 to 50 percent because they're sending a clear economic message on the water bill to use water efficiently. Here's what it looks like in an equation that goes right into a billing system. And it's part science, it's part legislation, and it's part logic. On the inside, number of residents times a gallon per person per day, plus ET, which is the weather, the evapotranspiration rate, the amount of water that evaporates and transfers to plants every day, the area of landscape that you're irrigating, and an efficiency factor that comes from state legislation. And that creates a water budget. Numerically, this is how it might appear on a water bill. Four people times 55 gallons per person per day, a state standard here in California for an efficient amount of use inside, plus the weather in May right now, seven and a half inches of evapotranspiration. This is a 5,000 square foot landscape, a typical home, with an efficiency factor of 0.8, comes to 34 units of water on the water bill. 34 100 cubic feet, or about 25,000 gallons of water. If that's what this user uses or less, they will pay a very small amount. They'll pay the fixed cost, they'll pay the low cost of water. But when they waste water, they will notice and they will get that message right on their water bill. This is a sustainable rate structure. This is what I've seen work time and time again but there's only 12 agencies out of 56,000 in the United States. So we have a long ways to go. And when there's a drought, water agencies start thinking and looking about, instead of doing the same thing over and over and over again of asking us to save and raise our rates, when we do, you and I complain, as we should. So what can we do? We have water. We have enough water in the atmosphere to exchange with what the water we have on, on Earth. When you turn on the tap, the water comes out. But take a look at your water bill. And if you don't understand it, then in the summer of 2014, you're going to be able to direct your water agency, your parents' water agency, your friend's water agency to go and get educated about how to fix the economics of water and water conservation so that it makes sense to all of us so that we can maintain our amazing water infrastructure and motivate people to use our most vital resource much, much more efficiently. And I trust that that's an idea that you'll want to share. Thank you.